In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a purchase order in Excel. And this is exactly what you will achieve by the end of this tutorial. Now, I already have some dummy products, that is product code, description, and then unit. Now, let me enter the quantities and show you how it works. So, if I enter the quantity for the first product, let's say I have quantity 14, and the price for each box is going to be 50. If I hit enter, you see that the total will be calculated. Going down, the subtotal will also be calculated as well as the grand total or the final total. Now let's enter the quantities and price for the second product. Maybe the quantity is 10 and then the price is going to be 40. Hit enter and then the total for the particular price is calculated and this will be added to the first total giving us a subtotal of this amount and then a grand total of this. Now if I enter loading, maybe $10 and hit enter, the $10 will be added to the subtotal giving us this total. We also have shipping of $100 and you see that the calculation is effected and finally we have other expenses of $120. If I hit enter, that will also be added to the grand total. Awesome. So, if you like what you have seen and want to create a purchase order like this, keep watching. Having opened Excel, the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the columns. And it should be noted that I'm going to use column A up to column I. So, I go ahead and adjust column A and then I'll do the same thing to column I. Just of the same size. I'm not actually going to enter anything under column A and column I. And you will know why later on in the tutorial. Next, I want to start entering my text and I will start under cell C2. And I'm going to enter the name of the company I am creating the purchase order for. Under the next cell, I enter purchase order, hit enter. Starting from here will be address. So you can just enter whatever address you want. Hit enter. Under cell B5, I enter date in capital letters. Then I move over to G5 and I enter PO, that's purchase order. I'll add hashtag to represent number. Hit enter. Here I enter supplier details. Hit enter. Next I have name followed by address. Hit enter and then order details. Hit enter. Now I'm done with the top part of the purchase order. The next thing I'm going to do is merge the cells so that they will appear well. So I start from here up to H. And I just choose merge and center. I do the same thing here. Merge and center. Address. I'll just merge it. It's not going to be centered. So it's just going to be merge across. Here is going to be where I entered the actual date. So I'll just merge the whole of this. Even though I'm not going to enter anything there. And this is where the purchase order number will be placed. Supply details is also going to be merged across. Name. Take note, the name is not going to be highlighted. And then order details, I'll merge everything. Oops, it's not going to be merged and center. It will be merged across. Alright, I can still align it here. Awesome. You see that I have some space right here. That is where I'm going to insert the logo of the company. Now it's time to enter the titles for the actual purchase order. So in here will be product code. Followed by description. You see that there's another cell here, but I'm not going to use it. I'm rather going to highlight the two cells where in description is. Then I merge and center them. Next I enter unit. That is going to be in quantities that is in either boxes tons or whatever i go to the next cell i have quantity followed by price so it can be price per unit whichever way you want to label it finally i have total perfect all these are going to be centered so i highlight everything then i click on center now it's time to adjust the columns so that everything will fit well into its own cell. So under column B and C, I open it like this so that product code will fit very well. I think there's an error here. 
I don't need the zero. I can open up price a bit as well as total like this. It should be noted that you can adjust it anytime you want. For now, let's leave it as it is. Next, I come over to cell 31, that is B31. Then I enter notes. So the whole of this space is where the actual products will come and their respective calculations. Under column G, I'm going to go ahead and enter subtotal. And it's going to be in line with the notes, that is row 31. You can add column if you want, hit enter. After the subtotal, you need to add everything that is necessary with regards to purchase orders. So I have loading. You can also add shipping and maybe other expenses. Then we now have the total. Perfect. Coming back in here, you need to enter some contact information in case there's an error or a problem with regards to the purchase order. There should be a contact information for the shipper to use. I'll just enter the contact information right here and I'll make sure everything is merged. It's not actually going to be merged and sent it to be merged across. And the nose, I'll just clear the whole of these cells so that it will be free for nose to be added. So I'll just merge everything. Here too is going to be merged. So you see that our design is coming up pretty well. In order to have a visual feel of it, the next thing we are going to do is add borders to it. So I start from here, where I have the name of the company. Then I drag to where I have the inquiry information. I'll just right click on the highlighted portion, click on former cells. Then I go over to border. I choose outline and inside. Click on OK. So this is how it will look like. This line here, we don't really need it. So what we can do is just merge here and do the same thing here. To make it run through, you can just hold on this square button here, then drag to whichever location you want. Perfect. I don't really need this line here. That is where my logo is going to be. So I'll just merge it like this. Next thing I'm going to do is format the text. I select this one, I make it bold, and I'm going to go ahead and increase the size to maybe 22. Pages order will be bold and the size will be 16. The rest of the text here will all be bold. Going down, here too will be bold, bold, bold. Let's preview to see how it will come up. Awesome. Next, I'm going to do a bit of more decoration. So I highlight the whole of this. I'll just merge it and I'm going to apply a shape fill to it. Maybe something like this. I do the same thing here. Merge and I choose this color. Merge and I choose this color. Finally, I do the same thing down here. let's take a look perfect going back similarly i can fill the inside with some colors so that there will be some kind of variations i'll select the whole of this up to details or maybe i include the heading i go to shape fill i'll use this color or maybe this and then the font color i'm going to change it to white so that it will stand out in here is going to be a different shading of color so i'm going to choose the lighter one i think this one will do so i'll just pause the video and do the rest of the shading and get back to you <laughs> all right now it's time to perform the calculations on our purchase order before we do that first of all let's format the cells right here to accept currency at the moment if i enter any amount maybe 500.00 if I hit enter, the 0, 0.00 will go off, which means that our cell is not being formatted to accept currency. So let's see how we can do that. So I will just highlight everything from here. Then I click on the small arrow here under number group. I choose currency. Under symbol, you can choose none if you want. However, if you need any currency sign, you can go ahead and select it from here. For this demonstration, I'm going to choose US dollars. Then I go ahead and click on OK. You see that the 500 is now having the 0.00 attached since we don't have any value there i'll take it off 
Similarly, I'll do the same thing here. They are also going to be in currency form. Okay, now let's perform the calculations. So in order to get the total, we are going to multiply the quantity by the unit price. So to get the answer here, first thing I do is press equal sign. Then I click on the cell and the quantity that is the first cell. And you see that the name of the cell will come there, which is F11 in my case. Then I enter the multiplication sign that is asterisk. Then I click on the first cell and the price and the name will come there. This means that we are multiplying quantity by price. I hit enter and the answer will come there. Since we don't have any values in here, the answer is going to be zero. Similarly, we do the same thing for the rest of the cells, but if we are going to repeat them, it will be time consuming. So what I do is click on the cell where we have already calculated. Then I hover on this small icon right here. I drag to the end. Take note, it's not going to affect where we have subtotal. So I released. Now to get subtotal, we are going to add the whole of these. And the cells we are going to add together are still highlighted as you can see. So simply go ahead and click on auto sum and the answer will come right under the whole of these figures. And it will also fall under subtitle. So I can click on it and make sure it is bold. All of these can be bold because they are all going to be affected. So at the moment, loading to is zero. We can simply enter it. Shipping is zero. Orders will also be zero. And then our total will be starting from subtotal up to orders. So what we do is we use the same formula. Just highlight the four figures. Then go ahead and click on auto sum. Perfect. I want to increase the size of the total a bit by making it 12 or 14 so that it will stand out. Now let's enter some products we want to order. So the product code, let's say we have X, Y, Z, 1, 2, 3. The description, we can just say product 1. Take note, everything here is was merged and centered. I don't need them to be centered. So upon highlighting, I make sure it is set to align left. Unit. Okay, what we are buying is going to be in boxes. So I enter boxes. The quantity is going to be 12. And the price for a box is going to be 40. Now you see that all what I'm doing, the calculations are not being run. But the moment I enter something under quantity and also enter something for price and hit enter, the calculation will run through. So we have something under the first row. And if you come to subtotal, you have the same thing there and the total has also been calculated. Now let's get product 2 to see how it will come up. So I'll just enter product 2. Maybe this one too is going to be in boxes and the quantity is going to be 10 and price is going to be 300. Now if I hit enter, you see the total for the particular product. Subtotal is being calculated and the total is also calculated. So if these are the two products we want to buy and loading will cost, let's say $50, hit enter. The total is added here. Maybe shipping is going to be $100, hit enter, and the calculation will be affected. Awesome. So that is how we create our purchase order. And the rest of the details can be done by whoever is going to use the purchase order. The number can be entered here, the date, and the rest of the information now let me quickly add the logo here so i go over to insert pictures this device i have the logo here i insert i will place it right here maybe i can widen this row here so that it will fit well this is not actually necessary let's preview it to take a look I can also add more design to it. Going back, I've already shown you how you can achieve that. So quickly, let me go ahead and change the design and get back to you. All right, this is the final design. Let's take a look. I've just removed the inside lines. That is the horizontal lines. So that's it on how to create a purchase order in Excel. In the meantime, stick around to watch related tutorials from the channel.
keep watching and i'll see you in any of the videos